joining me now in welcoming our keynote address, uh, which will be provided by Dave Casina. Dave, I know you have some slides to get set up here, is that right? Yep. Uh, Dave is the Chief Executive Officer of Siemens Energy of the North American Transmission and Distribution Division. And can I talk to you in any way? I'm not sure. All right. start, I would like to thank, I think there's going to be a lot of thanking going on today, <laughs> um, the Hudson Renewable Energy Institute, of course, uh, Dr. Murray and Marist College, uh, and of course my Union College friends, Alan Page and Charlie Frenny for, uh, I don't know if it's inviting or arm twisting or what, what exactly was involved, but I'm really happy to be here in any case. <laughs> um, Alan mentioned, uh, you know, that the marketplace for electricity is uh, what I would call very frothy right now. And a lot of what's driving that, of course, is shale gas and the, uh, you know, incredibly unexpected price level of, uh, of natural gas today. It changes the economics completely around, uh, around you know, various energy options. And then you add to that, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of heat right now uh, under this whole topic of nuclear power and whether uh, nuclear is safe or whether it can be made affordable or what do we do with our, you know, our 104 reactors that are reaching or beyond their, their design lives. And uh, quite honestly, I mean, as much as we like to cheer that renewable energy is great and, and everything else, uh, there's a lot of debate back and forth as to whether it's uh, affordable, whether uh, uh, the reliability issues uh, can be dealt with and so forth. So it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of fog right now in terms of where, uh, you know, where, where the future is as far as energy is concerned. And I think, you know, with that as a, as a, uh, a backdrop, it's, this is a great uh, topic for a conference and a great you know, discussion stimulator, I think, around this question of what will it actually take to get renewable energy options to become more mainstream. Uh, to give you a little bit of context for uh, my remarks to come, uh, please allow me to say a few words about my company. Uh, Siemens is a multinational conglomerate. Uh, we operate with 450,000 employees in over 190 countries around the world. Uh, we're one of the uh, world's leading technology companies with concentration in healthcare, industrial applications, uh, infrastructure solutions for cities, and of course our energy practice. Our 168 year uh, company history has its foundation actually anchored in the energy field. And today Siemens is a leading solution provider when it comes to virtually any form of energy conversion and delivery, including wind and solar generation, uh, clean conventional power generation using either natural gas or coal gasification fuels, uh, high voltage transmission systems featuring either AC or DC technology, and state-of-the-art smart grid applications for the power delivery uh, systems of the future. Today, more than one-third of all the electricity produced and delivered in the United States is done with Siemens technology. And my goal with uh, my remarks is to use that sort of broad world perspective uh, to give you a few thoughts on this subject of renewable energy and what, you know, maybe is holding it back a little bit and what are, you know, at least some ideas from within Siemens on how we can unlock uh, some more of that potential. So let's begin at the, at the beginning. Uh, from the earliest days, you get the sense that man instinctively knew that there was incredible power to be harnessed and unleashed from the elephant and from the, uh, from the elements. Sophocles said, wonders are many and none is more wonderful than the power that crosses the White Sea driven by a stormy wind. 
Now, we may not have envisioned a landscape or a seascape that was enhanced by the engineered beauty of an array of, of uh, wind turbines, but he knew that there was power in the wind. Now, we can fast forward a little bit, and uh, here we see uh, Thomas Edison, uh, a favorite son of New York State business history. Uh, Alan uh, harkened back to Edison as well in his opening remarks. In many ways, he was one of the principal fathers of the electricity system that we use today. And even as Edison was advancing fossil fuel fueled uh, power generation in his laboratories and giving rise to the General Electric Company, he was also thinking about the future and how man could harness the elements to produce useful energy. Uh, here's his quote. Uh, I put my money on the sun and solar energy. What a source of power. I hope that we don't have to wait until oil and coal run out before we tackle that. Energy, specifically electricity, uh, derived from renewable sources was a vision contemplated by great minds uh, really through the ages. But somehow, even with all the advances in science and engineering that we've witnessed uh, down through the years, substantial electricity supplied from the wind and the sun is still elusive. And we have to ask ourselves, why the heck is that? Well, certain decisions made over 100 years ago about how to, des how to design the industry that would handle the production and distribution of electricity combined, of course, with the unbridled momentum of the fossil fuels industry, steered us in the direction, really, of a bulk power system designed to give us the cheapest and most reliable supply without much regard to peripherals like the environment or depleting resources. And when we didn't uh, really regard the environmental ramifications of our actions or the, the logarithmic toll on our natural resources, the United States has made the most of an electricity supply system that really up through the 70s and 80s was the envy of the entire world. It's low cost and highly reliable electricity powered up generations of ever expanding economic pro progress and it allowed our society to develop in ways and at speeds never contemplated. And the electricity we produced and consumed was a catalyst for many, if not to say most, of the world's great innovation breakthroughs in the 20th century. We were uh, the envy of the world, and today our standard of consumption, uh, whether we say that as a bad word or a good word, uh, is the benchmark to which all other countries, especially developing ones around the world, strive to meet. And to this day, I think we all owe a huge debt of thanks, or at least an acknowledgement, that that electricity supply network, uh, such as it is, uh, enables uh, a considerable amount of the prosperity that we enjoy as a nation today. I think the point is that we, you know, it really is a system, uh, an entire industry, a marketplace, uh, an infrastructure. Behind the scenes, yes, but still an incredible, uh, some have quoted it to say it's the most incredible machine ever, uh, ever, ever created in the world. Uh, it accounts, just in the United States alone, for $300 billion a year in annual receipts, but it rests on a foundation of design that is well over 100 years old. Uh, we have to say it works very well. Uh, it's pretty boring. Uh, it's relatively cheap still to this day. It's very safe. It's reliable. Uh, so there's a lot of momentum, I think, among, among a lot of people to say, just leave it alone. But. Uh, you know, the reality is, of course, that we can't do that. For one thing, our network of power plants and grids is, in fact, getting very old. It needs, a lot of it needs replacing all, all around our country. Uh, and society's demand for more and more electrical <coughs> just, uh, energy with better and better reliability profiles to power ever-expanding technology needs is driving us to strain our electric grid to almost the breaking point. And then let's talk about climate change issues. It's really hard these days to find anyone anymore who will just outright state that man's use of fossil fuels does not have some impact on our planet. You know, maybe there are people out there who still want to debate whether uh, the effect is neutral or, or bad, uh, but usually the combination of emitting more and more of one element, i.e. carbon, into the atmosphere, combined with rapidly expanding population uh, around the world, whose chief feature 
uh, is the astounding number of people who will, will enter the society as third world citizens and then very rapidly progress into the developed world uh, as consumers in just a few short years is, is enough of a convincing argument. In fact, even to this day, uh, you know, almost two billion people on our, in, on our planet have either no electricity or barely any. And so you can just imagine as, as that part of the population starts to ramp up uh, its consumption, even, even just getting you know, on, on a track to approach our levels somewhere in the future, the, the added strain on our fossil fuels, on our depleting resources, on our climate, situation is is really astonishing to even think of. So I think, you know, there is certainly acknowledgement all around the world that something's happening and we need to do something about it. And part of the answer, clearly I think, uh, certainly to all of us in this room, is to start to shift uh, our technological approach to electrical uh, production to more and more uh, resources that are benign to our environment, like renewable energy technologies using, using the sun and wind. In our uh, country at the moment, just to give you some statistics, uh, wind and solar technologies account for only around 4% of the installed power generation capacity. And on a worldwide basis, uh, the percentage is similar. But because of low capacity factors of these technologies, uh, the actual percentage of electrical energy production is, is really much less than 4%. It's probably closer to 2%. When renewable energy costs more to produce, there is additional cost to delivering it as well. And uh, what we have in the ground currently, uh, traditional generation, as I said earlier, works very well. And uh, you know the electricity supply system, really, if, we're, if we, we kind of get down to the, to the crux of the matter, is designed to favor the lowest cost sources of electricity. I mean, there are economies are geared towards cheap electricity. Uh, yes, it has to be reliable and safe, but really, you know, everybody talks about the economic engine that, that very low cost uh, electricity provides for uh, societies. And, and so that tends to be a, uh, a driving feature of the system that we are, in fact, trying to get renewable energy uh, technologies to be a part of. And I think that's really part of the big problem with the adoption of renewables. You know, although there's certainly intellectual evidence out there that suggests that it would be a good idea to accelerate the mainstreaming of this technology, it isn't happening because we're trying to make it fit in a, uh, in a hundred year old industry framework uh, that really uh, doesn't exactly support uh, the inclusion of a source of electricity that maybe isn't the cheapest, uh, cheapest uh, day to dance, so to speak. 